everybody. Tommy Scoville, you are on the lifeboat. How you doing? Hope you're having a uh, excellent end of the uh, week. It is Friday, people. You have made it. Right? You made it through the big one. Uh, Christmas is right around the corner, and this is the last Friday before then, so excellent. You saw a werewolf drinking a pina colada at Trader Vic's. I'm going to go out on a limb and say his hair was perfect. Ow! Werewolves of London. I saw that man play that in concert in a teeny, teeny, teeny little uh, bar in the Northeast at a ski area. And prior to that, I picked him up at the airport in an airport shuttle. And it was just me and him on the air, uh, on the airport shuttle, which was awesome. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm a huge fan of yours. And he looked at me with a fairly healthy amount of disdain, to be honest, and said, of course you are, because I was quite young. And I said, no, man, I'm a big fan of yours. And he goes, name your fa um, your favorite song that I've done. He's like, and I'll bet you cash I know what that song is. And I said, uh, Werewolves, Guns, and Money. And he just looked at me kind of bewildered and went, that's not what I thought you were going to say. I said, what did you think I was going to say? He said, uh, Werewolves of London. And I said, uh, I'm not sure that's in your top five. And he said, no, I don't think it is either. But it certainly was a hit. But he made me look really cool in front of a a young girl that um that I dated. Um it was actually a pretty cool uh, a pretty cool deal. Beg your Hoden. Lawyers, guns and money. That's what I said. I said send werewolves lungs, uh, guns and money. I don't think I think uh, Johnny Scoville has bumped his head people. It happens from time to time. Ah, who, who knows? But I was, uh, I'm actually a fairly big, uh, big fan. Sadly, uh, he sick, uh, his, he lost his bout with, uh, with cancer, but he was really, uh, uh, he was a great musician and he was a lot of fun to watch. You know, it was a lot of fun to watch. I did say that atypical Paul hippie chick also backs this up. Mischief managed said it too. You know what? You people, you people. Yep. See that Juliana said he bumped his head. He bumped his head. I got at least, you know, at least one of you will back me. Thank you. The rest of you, I'm not so sure about. All right, people, listen, there's been some talk in the last couple of days. <clears throat> we're talking about Danny Masterson. That's what we're talking about. And in the last uh, couple of days, there's been a great deal. There's been a great deal of, uh, of talk about this cat getting sent to the joint and that he might be in Chino at the uh, prison complex in Chino, California. Um, I got news for you that um, that's not the case. Uh, that is what was reported. It is not the case. It is a case of mistaken identity. There is somebody in, uh, in the Chino um, prison and his name is Danny Masterson, but it is not that Danny Masterson. It is just somebody who probably is bummed out about having the same name. I mean, not that it's going to get him hit or anything else. I mean, they're they're thorough. They're not going to. There won't be mistaken identity. However, I'm sure he catches a lot of flack anyway because prison is a place where people are cruel to one another for the sake of being cruel. Like it's a it's entertainment in there. So the fact is, he is not in prison yet. But the the uh, the last court hearing, the judge was really really clear. And you get the feeling that the judge was not particularly happy with Danny Masterson. And more importantly, in my humble opinion, with Danny Masterson's attorney. I have talked on the show many times about um, my last time that I got in trouble, right? Uh, and it was for a felon in possession of a firearm. And those felon in possession of a firearm charges are uh, very, very serious. Uh, all gun charges are very serious. But as I said, I had a whole host. There he is. Um, I would imagine he's not looking uh, quite that uh, that dapper. However, there's one gun missing. It's a Keltec, right? Uh, it's a Keltec 32. It is not a very big um, big pistol. It's a small firearm. But oddly enough, this is the firearm that um, one of my friends, the uh, one of the Jane Doe's, said that. Danny Masterson pulled out uh, during the uh, commission of the uh, of the crime against her. In fact, that looks very much like that gun. I think the one that he had may have been black um, pla um, plastic, but it's the same gun, right? Very, very small. Of all of the guns that he has, why this one is missing is really odd, right? 
because it's kind of stipulated through the case anyway, right? It's not like uh, if they find that there's some massive amount of evidence. And you know what I think, honestly? I think this sicko kept this because he thought he was going to beat the case and this was a trophy. Yes, yeah, Scarlett Cook, I believe that. I believe that. No, he is not wearing street clothes. He is in a, he is in, uh, and he's not in prison uh, outfit. There you go. That's the Keltec that he'd be looking at. That's the gun. Yep, almost exactly like that one right there. That's what it looked like. And I think he kept it as a trophy because he's a sick, sick piece of crap. That's my humble opinion, right? Now, he is in county jail still. But the paperwork said, when the when a judge says forthwith, right, the judge uh, is is serious. And what it basically means, it's normally signed, like if you're a federal inmate, it says forthwith on your paperwork. What it means is there's no chance that you're three buses away from getting shipped off. You absolutely, the next time anybody gets shipped, you're gone. And I have been told by very reliable sources that they do not stop for Christmas. And if that is in fact the case, I would imagine he will be gone by Christmas. <laughs> That's exactly right. That would, uh, it would not fit well in my hands. I promise you. It's a very, very small uh, little thing. In fact, this is a one liter Coca-Cola. Probably didn't know that, but that's a, uh, it's a one liter bottle. I'm kidding. Uh, is it normal to take this long? And why is it taking this long for him? Asks Christy Caldwell. And the answer to that question is no. This is abnormal like a big dog. And in my humble opinion, Calhoun, we do not know what prison he is going to yet. But in my humble opinion, Christy, the, what is happening is uh, this was a play by his attorneys. Right. And it may not have been intentional in the beginning. I think in the beginning, when the uh, attorney handed over all the guns, I think what gets lost in this um, in, in the minds of a lot of people is he got a hung jury the first time. Right. They did not convict him the first time. So because this individual um, thought he was going to get away with it, uh, he didn't turn over guns. Right. There was a bunch he didn't turn over. Now, his attorney should have been on that. Honestly, his attorney should have been on that. And on top of that, the officer of the court should have been on it as well. Right? There's a lot of people that kind of dropped the ball on this thing. There he was. That's what he looked like. And I'll be honest, that is the uh, coat that he was wearing at sentencing. I had on a different tie, but that's the coat he had on. And white running shoes with Velcro that looked like he might have bought a pair that were two sizes too large, but he's living with it. He didn't send him back. Uh, will he automatically be put him on the watch? And that will be determined by um, the first prison he goes to. The first prison that you go to is called an intake yard. The intake yard, this is why I went, huh, I'll be damned because uh, I don't think you'd go to Chino to do intake. But you're going to go to an intake yard and they're going to do assessment. Sometimes it's called an assessment yard. Sometimes it's called the fish tank, right? Because you're fresh fish. but He's going to go to the uh, to the uh, intake yard, and they're going to put him through an entire process of a psychological evaluation, multiple psychological evaluations. Um, and he's also going to do physical exams. Uh, they're going to x-ray him. They're going to do, I don't know exactly, I think he's 47, right? So over the age of 45, he's going to get a, uh, uh, he's going to get his prostate examined. They're going to do a whole bunch of stuff, right? Chest x-ray. He's probably already had a TB test at least three times. Not exactly sure why, uh, but that is how they do it. Did he ever do the, the psych eval? The His pre-sentence investigation, his pre-sentence report isn't out yet. Not that I've been able to get a copy of anywhere. So I don't know the answer to that. My gut says he did, right? And here's why. There was a lot of conversation concerning the fact that this guy isn't sleeping and he's complaining a great deal about all of the noise in the prison. Um, he's complaining about, there's a whole laundry list of stuff that he was complaining about that you wouldn't complain about to anybody but psych. It honestly sounded like it was coming from a psych report. Uh, it is possible to refuse the psych evaluation. It absolutely is possible to refuse the psych evaluation. However, his attorney, whether hired by the Church of Scientology, whether working for the Church of Scientology, it would be malfeasance as an attorney to not say to him, hey, guess what? 
you want any of the medication you're taking on the street because we all speculate that Danny Masterson is a person that obviously wouldn't deal with the do a psychological eval. He's a Scientologist in good standings. But when he got there, he gave them all friggin' laundry list of drugs that he said he was taking. Right? There's a lot of things that he said he was taking on the street that he needed to sleep and all of those things. I don't know. To me, that seems like, you know, he probably got that from who? Maybe he wasn't just such a uh, a spit shine Scientologist. I don't know. Do you think Danny is uh, still so dependent on alcohol that they are treating him? Absolutely not. No chance on God's green earth. They, they would have treated him for a maximum. And I mean, I should take that back. I apologize. His detox has been over forever. He was done detoxing before I got back from Los Angeles at his sentencing. I'm not even being funny. I mean, they, they'll detox him in a week. They'll, they'll get him detoxed in seven days. He'll be off of the um, benzo protocol within seven days. That's usually how that works. Nice live chat to bite uh, my dog to. Nice. Nice, nice. B. Christman, good to see you. Glad that you're here. Uh, so, but they could still be treating him like like a peer support treating thing, right? They absolutely could be treating him. They're not going to be treating him with um, uh, with any medications for his um, alcohol dependency. That is gone. That's exactly true. Spanks Calhoun's right. They will. They. I doubt quite a bit if uh, if it's one of those situations where. Um, they're not much on comfort. They'll give him enough benzos to make sure that uh, he's going to be all right. Seven days to detox from alcohol, Sherry. That's that's the standard protocol in prison. And I and look, that what I mean by that is they're going to give you benzos for about seven days. So for the first um, three days, they give you a, a fairly high dose, and then they progressively step it down. And on the uh, at the end of those seven days, they move you from a benzo to a high dose of diphenhydramine. This is what they did to me. Uh, a high dose of diphenhydramine um, and then uh, nothing. Best of luck. Now, the mugshot will be coming, Amanda. A lot of people are waiting for this. And it really technically isn't the mugshot, right? The mugshot has already been taken. If it's not out and it's not leaked, it's already been taken, right? They, they took that picture a long time ago. The ones that always get leaked really, really quickly right? Because they're easy as hell to get and they're easy as hell to get out to the street. What we're going to see, and everyone's going to call it that, but it is not. What you are going to see is his prison ID photo, right? They're not particularly flattering. I think I got a prison ID laying around here somewhere. Um, maybe I don't have one laying around here somewhere. I thought I had one. They're not, they're not particular. They look like a credit card, right? You get a credit card that looks very much like a, um, you know what, uh, v, v. Williams, he has gotten a steady, uh, um, he has gotten visitors throughout the time he's been in the, Calif uh, in the California jail system. He has steadily gotten uh, visitors. However, uh, as far as family goes, I don't know the answer to that. I know that uh, he has, um, he's filed, right? And supposedly he's been declared, right? Supposedly he is now no longer in good standing with the Church of Scientology. Now, if that is the case and he is an SP, well, then his relatives can't go and see him, can they? But he signed over rights of his kids, right, to Bijou. So Bijou has uh, got the rights to the kids. He also signed over all of the uh, stuff for his, um, the for the residuals that he gets, the royalties that he gets off of um, all of the television and all of the movie roles that he did. And he was a very, very active um, person in Hollywood. Whenever somebody says Danny Masterson, we go, that 70s show. He did a lot of stuff, more than that 70s show. In fact, ironically, he played a guy that was, um, that date, you know, assaulted a, uh, a girl and played that character. Very, very creepy to see him play that role. Uh, but there are a lot of, if you're not getting a bell for notification, Back out, come back in. And when you hit notification, there's a couple of different kinds, right? You can hit all because I do a lot, right? Especially during the holiday season. And I think there's Bijou right there. That, uh, his wife Bijou has, uh, 
uh, they are now estranged, right? They're no longer, the divorce is final. And I'll tell you something, people, for a Hollywood divorce, the speed at which this thing went through, the speed at which he got all of his names off of everything, led a lot of people to speculate because of what the, the um, uh, a good Scientologist believes. A good Scientologist believes that you're going to, you've already done this how many times and you're already, and you're going to do it how many times again? You feel me? Dropping the body is the term that they use. And I want to tell you something. We do not encourage body dropping, right? Um, if you're feeling depressed this time of year, reach out to anybody. However, Scientologists believe that you can drop the body and you're just going to go, bah, and then boom, he's going to be right back in. And of course, he's a Scientologist, so he's aware. So as that uh, child begins to, uh, you know, to grow, he will be a fully sentient Phaeton ready to maybe head back to Hollywood and see if he can do it a little better this next time, right? So there's a lot of people that are considering this. Uh, question, what are the chances he gets CMC, California Men's Colony, because uh, it's closer to San Diego? Uh, you know what? He's going to a, uh, a level four. He's going to be going to a level four yard. Now, the odds that he gets, um, I don't know enough about CMC. I really don't. I can't answer that with any kind of intelligence, so I, do, I don't want to answer that. Peter, I'll look into it. Um, but as far as giving him an opportunity to be closer to whatever, they don't give a rat's but I promise you, they got no desire whatsoever to cater to you as an inmate to get you closer to home. Like I said to the judge, and the judges always say it, they make it look good. Uh, we're going to suggest that, um, you know, that Tommy gets sent to, uh, uh, what was it called? Herlong. Herlong. Because Herlong is 45 minutes from where I live and the woman I was engaged to be married to lived. 45 minutes. Would have been convenient as hell. Did he send me there? No. No. No, he sent me somewhere where you had to uh, get on an airplane and then rent a car and drive for an hour or two. They do not do anything to make anything easy um, because you're a, you're a convict. You're not even a citizen, right? You've lost, you know, you're just, you're a nothing at that point. You know, I was, uh, I was reminiscing sadly about not the, uh, the but the, the damage done, even if you get out and get your life together. Steve Mo uh, Molesky, good to see you. It's a, you know, when you get out and you get your life together, it's still, I used to get 10 minutes, right? You got 10 minutes to eat. And I'm talking about from the time that you stepped into the chow hall to the time you went around the corner online with everybody else. And there's lines coming from both sides to meet at the windows, right? So, and they hand you out the food. You go, got to find a place to sit down. There's, uh, I believe I'm looking at Chino. Am I not? No. Or is that... Well, it's not a federal, it's not a federal yard. Yeah, I, uh, I think I'm, I'm not 100% sure. And I just dropped, there it is. What am I doing? Uh, so is he joining the Sea Org? Well, here's a really funny thing. And this is something that I kind of uh, want to propose to, uh, to people. Uh, this is a concept, people, that... Uh, I'm fascinated by. So if these people could drop the body and immediately come back, where the hell is L. Ron Hubbard, right? I mean, L. Ron Hubbard dropped his body before Spanx Calhoun was born, right? So where's where's L. Ron? And how come he hasn't come back to finish uh, OT 8, you know, I mean, 9, 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, 15, right? Keep that stuff going. A level four yard means this. What is in a level four yard, says Christian B., all right? So they do them accord to, according to levels. So let's say let's say you got a DWI, right? And it's a felony DWI, and you're actually gonna go away for a period of time, right? You're just gonna get you're gonna get shipped off. So you're gonna end up on a level one yard because you're not considered a real danger to society. So the percentage of guards to inmates is considerably lower. Because the inmates are far less likely to attack one another. They're far less likely to be, you know, making weapons and doing all of those things. And since the people are well more well-behaved, they're given more rights. They're out more during the day. It's more like summer camp for bad people when you're at the level one facilities. You get to the level two facilities, and now you're getting some people who at the level one's facilities got in trouble. Now, these are people that are not well-behaved, right? Um, 
becoming less well-behaved, I should say. Oh, boy. Now, hell on earth, right, uh, would be this is your level four facilities, right? When you get to level four, you're getting up to places like Pelican Bay and places that are ugly. The people who are there did ugly crimes, um, right? These are violent individuals, violent criminals. That's what are on the level four yards. They are violent inmates, right? Not where you want to be. But you know why he's not going to a level four yard? And by the way, people, I, this wasn't reported. Uh, um, I think I reported it here last week, but I did it in a different video. It wasn't in a Danny Masterson video. So I do think it's kind of important that uh, I make the point uh, concerning this. Um yeah, Kern Valley Prison right there. And you usually see these things that look like they're very highly symmetrical, right? Because you're going to have an A, B, C, D yard or a one, two, three, four yard, right? So you have all of those tend to be um, almost autonomous. They can run so that they're not putting all of those yards together out at the same time ever, right? That is the last thing in the world you would ever, ever want on planet Earth, right? You just simply would not want that. But Danny was designated level three, right? That's what we were looking at for the longest time was this cat was going to a level three yard, right? Wrong. So right around the last uh, week. And I think, honestly, I think some of this has to do with the fact that his, his legal team is making angry everybody involved in this. These, these stunts that keep you tied up in court, that's uncool. <laughs> I mean, I promise you, the courts don't dig that. Here's the end of it, right? So they moved him to level four. Now he is his designation is a level four yard. That's bad for him. That is a bad uh, for him thing. There's a big prison in Victorville. Yes, there is. Calhouni, can you pull, pull up Victorville, please? And don't pick up the uh, where it says USP or whatever. See if you can get a picture of the Victorville prison complex, Calhoun. Right? Because the, the prison you're describing in Victorville is a prison complex, right? What's called a federal prison complex or a uh, FPC. FPCs have camps. FPCs have FCIs on them, federal correction institutions. And they also have United States penitentiaries and they're all in one spot so that the camp works to keep the other prisons going. Like when we get locked down, the campers come in to cook for us, clean for us, right? Take care of all that stuff because no inmate is allowed out of their cell when you're on lockdown. And in Victorville, you're always on lockdown. That's where I, uh, that's where I took my on the stomach. I got stabbed at uh, at FCI two in uh, Victorville, or as the uh, as the fellas called it, the deuce. The deuce got so out of control that it literally uh, the feds came in and said, "Nope, everybody goes. We're shutting this place down." <laughs> right? I mean, as far as administration goes, we're taking over. They were so wildly out of control, and there it is, fellas and ladies. That right there is uh, the Victorville complex. The prison that you see, Calhouni, if we can move that uh, cursor up there to the right, right? Uh, so up near the uh, the lifeboat, that corner right there. There you go right there. That is an entire facility. And the prisons that you see that almost look like, I mean, the buildings that you see that almost have like a cheese kind of look to the top of them, those are stacked four levels high, right? And if you look at one of these things from the front, it looks like it should be built in some dystopian movie prison thing of uh, from the future. Because on the outside of those buildings are mesh staircases going up. Uh, why was I stabbed? In all honesty, I was stabbed because I was doing a bunch of drugs. It's really what it comes down to. I was doing a bunch of dope in there. I mean, honest, it, it was a, a case of mistaken identity. But the order that went out said stab the old white bald guy. I mean, the old white guy with a cane. And uh, me and this other white guy did a bunch of dope. Both of us. Both had ponytails. Both walked with a cane. And uh, had I not been doing dope. They would. They certainly wouldn't have stabbed the wrong guy. So what it came down to was I was doing a ton of dope. But those yards, <clears throat> so there are four four full-size prisons on each, I mean, the uh, units on every one of those. That is just depressing to look at. I'm not going to lie to you. It is depressing to look at. But that's how most of the prisons are built these days, right? So you see the, the complex on the inside. So that, when I tell you there's a hallway that goes around that entire thing, I literally mean there is a hallway that goes around that entire thing. So when it's raining or whatever, yeah, normally the inmates are walking on the inside of that. Inside that little courtyard is how you go to lunch. It's how you go to any of your functions. So there's always a building between you and the outside. 
However, if it's raining really bad or things like that, you're in a hallway that goes through the entire outside of those prisons. And there are crews that paint the hallway, right? They'll start painting it in January. And right around the time that they're done painting it, they just start again. I'm not even being funny because it takes so long to paint. So there's, there's a paint crew painting the hall at all times, 20, you know, 365 days a year. They're going to work at night painting the, the, uh, the inside. You could get a Harley Davidson in the fifth gear in that hall. It just goes on forever and it never turns, right? They're just completely straight until it takes like a 90 degree turn. And yeah, they're big. Uh, so Danny is still in county jail, people. That's what it comes down to. He's still in county jail, but there will never be another bus that leaves taking the guys to uh, prison that he's not on. He's on the next train. And they have, I think this has been a ploy. I think all of this has been a ploy to try to keep uh, him um, from going away. But in the process of this happening, the gun thing, which is what they were using to kind of string this thing along, uh, well, now they're, they're researching the hell out of this gun stuff. So today, believe it or not, is the last day that Mr. Danny Masterson can uh, hand over his appeal appeal his conviction or appeal his sentence. He can't, he cannot appeal after today. As of yesterday, uh, and we checked with the courts, as of yesterday, they had not filed an appeal, which is odd. You know, it's, that's odd that uh, I, my lawyers didn't cut, uh, you know, cut things to the last day. That's frightening. I wouldn't want my attorney doing that. Not sure why, right? How much work they had to put into this. But as of yesterday, it had not been filed. And here's the thing. Now they've got something over old Danny Masterson. I'm not kidding. The reason I brought up that Caltech gun earlier, on my case, I was missing a Walther PPK, one gun, similar situation. Whole pile of guns got confiscated, right? But they were looking for one gun that they could not find and they were losing their mind. They want the case wrapped up real nice. Their biggest fear is that gun that's missing is going to pop up somewhere else after somebody gets wounded or killed with it and people are going to say wait a sec let me get this straight this was whose gun you had the opportunity to get this and you didn't that's their biggest fear so they want this Keltec. they want it bad so this caused all kinds of uh, of investigations and what we found is that these guns that were sold got the, the the laws got broken really horrendously on the missing guns right there are there are literally 60 years worth of felonies attached to how Danny Masterson got rid of the guns he did not turn over to the courts. Danny could not sell those guns. You have to physically transfer the property. You can't do it. He would have had to have done it. So the fact that it went down some other way means something hinky was going on. And then the federal firearms uh, dealer that dealt with it said, the ID isn't coming back to being a, a real ID or a real person. You start handing fake IDs off for the purpose of purchasing firearms, you're going to federal prison. These sentences carry beefy, beefy prison terms. I did them. This is what I got out from. This is why I was in there, right? Second sentence that I did in the feds was for guns. Um, I promise you they're not going to give, they're not, they, this is one of those situations where he could go in there and, and do really fantastic on the appeal, right? Let's say he let, he won the lottery and does great on the appeal. The feds could go, okay. Let's talk to you about 60 years in the feds. They got dead to rights, right? I mean, honestly, someone's going, someone has got deep trouble coming and they're not dropping it. This is not going to go under the carpet. They are absolutely going hard on this. You know why? No joke. Because of people like this, because of all of you, because of the fact that people are talking about this, right? A.A. Ron does this and 50, you know, 100,000 people hear about it and go, what the hell are you talking about? If this were uh, if this were Tommy Scoville, oh, I'll tell you something. You know, I got uh, I got a lot of time for guns. I went away for a long, long time. <laughs> um, but his lawyers might be saying, <clears throat> "Let's just let it go." You know, they do these kind of deals behind doors all the time. They could be saying, "Look, you got a thirty-year sentence. You might be out in 23, 24. or you know, what if we keep appealing and pushing this and everything else, and then you get 60 years in gun charges? By the way, they're not going to promise anything. I've been in prison with guys who, you know, you meet them and they say, yeah, I've been here for about four years or five years or seven years or whatever the case may be. And then one day they come and, and lug them. They go, yeah, you're leaving. Why? 
You know, they get they get lugged off. You're going to the feds for what? Gun charges from back and whatever. The feds can prosecute you on gun charges for a really long time after the fact. The uh, the the difference between the state and the uh, federal um, gun laws, Pete Peter, are really they're difficult for me to understand. I'm I'm not at all uh, clear on the difference. I mean, I don't understand why some uh, some things because everything that I did with guns was a federal offense. Sometimes the feds pick it up. Sometimes they don't. I don't understand that. Right? Anything I do because I've already been there is a uh, is a going to end up uh, being a felony and a federal offense. It's just how it is. Why is Grandma's house always uncomfortably cold? Well, you see. I wouldn't uh, say anything to uh, to confirm or deny that when I was married to your mom. I certainly wouldn't say anything now. I remember that house being warm and comfortable and loving and nice. <laughs> All right, Calhoun, I'm not reading any more of your comments out because I'm not going to get you busted or or me busted. I'm smarter than that. So um, now a couple of people, I got a comment, a, a couple of questions right at the end. I think uh, Martha. Martha Simons, I think, yesterday said, um, by the way, uh, how is Danny going to uh, survive in here? You know, what is what what are the uh, what are the hopes that um, what is what are his chances? Um, and I think what it really comes down to with this one is going to uh, is going to be what uh, what the fellas where he gets dropped uh, end up. Uh, if he ends up in the wrong uh, in the wrong prison, they're going to do everything they can to tax the hell out of this dude before they whack him, um, or before they beat him, or before they just run him off the yard. Uh, it it I don't see it being a, a pleasant opportunity for the guy, and it is what it is, right? I mean, it, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, everybody would get treated the same way, right? In a perfect world, everybody would get treated the same way, and uh, but it's not that perfect world, and. People have uh, convicted of that particular crime don't do particularly well in prison. It's way worse for people who uh, whose victims are underage. That's really the uh, the worst of the worst of the worst. Does time go by really slow in prison? Um, it's a very odd thing because it grinds at a uh, at a horrendously slow pace, and then when it's over and you look back on it. It doesn't feel like it took forever. It feels like 10% of your life disappeared like that. But when you're in it, oh, Lord, yes. And you and there are head games that you do to try to make it go quicker. You know what I mean? Like you don't, I know you, you see in movies that people go up and they count days, right? You put a, de- a line on the wall. I mean, there's never been a, a, there's never been anybody convicted that didn't do math, that didn't say, okay, I got 10 years, I'm going to, Multiply 10 years by 365, right? And this is what this is how many days I'm gonna have to bring them, give or take, right? And then you multiply the time off for good behavior and everything you got to do, which is you're gonna put that one day up there knowing there's 3,300 and some change that you're gonna have to do on top of that. Uh, I think that kind of thing drives people nuts. Um, yeah, you acclimate. I mean, there's something to that. You do acclimate. Uh, I can't speak to what he's gonna. I don't know how people with uh with paperwork like that acclimate. I, I I really don't because there's not going to be, there's not going to be a, uh, a welcome committee as believe it or not, people in prison, you do get a welcome committee, right? Your, your race or your car, if you're from a particular part of California um, and in California, that's a big thing, right? Because the California prison system is so big. When you show up, they'll be like, uh, where, where are you coming in from? Coco County, uh, the Coco County car is over there. Right. And, in the Cali system, you got cars that are broken up by what part of Cali are you from? You know, the Northern California guys are the, uh, you know, whatever. It's a, and, and California is a huge prison system. It's huge. I mean, there are, California's got more people in prison than, than most countries, right, on the planet. It's got a huge prison system. Uh yeah, I mean, I think that that's that's probably what it is. 
Um, and 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 I just saw a uh, I just saw a, a comment earlier that said, you know, why are you uh, why are you obsessed with Danny in prison? Yo, here's the deal, right? I run a sobriety channel and I comment on true crime as somebody that has been to prison, right? Um, and I do what the audience requests that I do, and I do these subjects because they bring people in who can then hear what I really do, and that's why I talk about this stuff. And the guy's a low life. I met his victims. Uh, that kind of made it personal, you know. And there's just something really messed up about somebody that thinks that they're entitled to that kind of stuff. Subi, question, Tommy, from someone who is naive. Why do they call it a car? I'm as naive as you are. I really am as naive as you are. Um, but it's been, you know, I didn't get in, I didn't get in trouble. I I was doing dope my whole life, but I didn't get in trouble um, for crimes until. Uh, later in life, right? But by the time I got there, they were calling it a car. Uh, and I don't know why, honestly. Like, I, I guess because they kick guys out of the car, right? Everybody's, but I don't know why. But it has always been called that as, as long as I've been there. And there's a lot of stuff like that that doesn't make sense to me. For instance, uh, if there's a fight in the day room, the cops hit the deuces, right? They don't hit a panic button. They don't hit a body, uh, you know, because that's really, it's a body panic button. But it's called hitting the deuces right? It's called hitting the deuces. Don't know why. I've heard a thousand theories, right? Like it used to be called channel 22 was only for panic. So hitting the deuces was the panic button. You would go to, to channel 22. I don't have any idea if there's any truth to that, right? You hear a lot of BS rumors in prison that go through the entire prison system. Like Bob Barker's son was in prison, which is why all of the products in prison are made by Bob Barker. It is not the same Bob Barker, but even after I went to prison the first time, got out, Googled it, right? Realized it was not the same thing and went back to prison and said to people, bro, I was I was in before. And when I got out, I Googled it, right? I'm telling you, it's not. Yeah, you're wrong. You're wrong. Like there's no telling a convict anything. And you, we live in a world in there that you can't Google anything. So anytime there's an argument, you're always going up to the cop going, hey, man, we need you to settle a debate. Can you, can you pull out your phone and ask Siri something? Because we got a debate going. True story. There's a, a lot of arguments and stuff like that in there because it's like 1989 in there, right? There is no internet for us. Drush Marouche. Have I seen a movie called Shot Collar? I do not think I have. I'm sorry. That doesn't ring a bell. What I can tell you is I have never... Um, I, I just... I, it was a legit question, Donnie. I'm not mad at you. It was a completely legit question. Um, have I seen the movie Shot Caller? All prison movies to me are pretty, I think they're pretty unrealistic. And they, they're, they make them way more violent than, than prison really is. And they also feel the need to, um, to throw in the, uh, you know, the, the R word, right? You, you would think that if you're in prison, you're either getting stabbed or repaid right there's it's one or the other because that's what every single prison film shows you and um you don't see a lot of instances of that in there there it goes on but it goes on i think consensually a lot more than it goes on um against people's will you know there are there are people in there on the dl uh not at the higher custody levels i promise you they're not doing that at the higher custody levels, but at the lower custody levels, they absolutely were doing that. Shawshank. Uh, you were trauma traumatized by a Sean Penn prison movie. I don't know if... Oh, was he on death row? Um, I remember a, a film where he was on death row. Marmite. Much prefer Marmite to Vegemite. Oh no. Is Crispin still around? You could yeah, there would be a dead man walking. Just it, no, I know that's the name of the movie, but that's funny. Is that if the if the Aussies hear you say that, there's gonna be dead man walking. You can't say that around here. We got a lot of Aussies. I'm kidding. Bad boys? I don't think that's the one they were going for. Uh is it? Is it for real bad boys? Are you guys playing with me? Bad boys, Google it. Um, okay. I, I, I'm not familiar with any of these people. You know, the last prison film I saw was called Carlito's Way, I think. Was it Carlito's Way? 
I think it was Carlito's way. Whatever it was, it's I I find them really uncomfortable, and I do not find them uh, particularly. Uh, I don't find them. Is Supermax bad? Asks Texas Blonde. You know something? I'll be really honest with you, and this may sound insane, but if I had to do fifty years in prison. I might want to do it at the Supermax versus doing it somewhere else. They have a um, they have a, a a TV in their cell, and they're in solitary confinement. There's no they're not having interaction with other guys. And uh, I'll be honest, you know, I wasn't craving interaction with other guys. I was trying to do everything I could to to read, uh, to journal, to work on me. You know, I was I I did run a couple of meetings, but it was because I was trying to break up the monotony of the day. I think that. I don't mind solitary. I'm a guy that did pretty well when I, whenever they took everybody away and I was put in the cell alone. I do pretty well that way, man. I really do. Uh, that, that I don't find hard time. Hard time is when you're in the exact same situation with a cellmate because now two of you are jammed into a place that is not big enough for two grown men to live in. It, I mean, even if you were, were the best of friends, it's not big enough for two grown men to live in. And if there's any kind of uh, of dissension amongst each other, then you're in serious trouble. And it can get so much worse um, if there's drugs involved or there's, there's anything else. And, you know, that's how people get really, really badly hurt. And for to answer to almost everybody's question that's coming up, Danny Masterson, they're going to try to give him a cellmate. And more than likely, it's going to be another person with a similar crime because no one else will agree to live with someone like that. Christian B says, if connection is what stopped us from going back, whatever that is, I have isolated myself and no longer have outside support. If this channel becomes the connection I need, then that's better than nothing. Uh, it's way better than nothing. And you know what? Don't stop at coming to the comment section and meeting people, right? Go over and, uh, and to the Facebook group. Don't tell me you hate Facebook, right? Do you hate addiction worse? Because addiction sucks worse than Facebook. And you don't have to go doing anything else on Facebook, but it's a great way that you can meet people here and actually exchange a little contact info, right? Private message people and find people that have been through what you're going through exactly because there's enough people here that there's someone going through exactly what you're going through. And I don't care what that is. If you're, if you're an alcoholic, but you do a bunch of ecstasy just when you go to raves, I promise you there's someone out there that has the same problem, right? Whatever your addiction is, there's, there's enough people now on the boat where someone else made it through the exact same thing. By the beginning of next year, um, the next phase of the lifeboat will be uh, uh, complete and rolled out. And that's going to be a support group that is around the clock so that if there's not a live chat going here, there's a live chat going somewhere else. And it's nowhere near uh, Facebook, by the way, which make everybody happy. But all of this is getting done and put in place as not to, not to brag. But as we promised it would way back in the day, we're actually on schedule to do where we want to be. But we are going to be here for uh, connection, Christian. If you come here, I promise there are people that want to connect with you. And there are people that want to see you be successful. I mean that. And thank you so much for the support. I, I'm glad you're here. Keep keep uh, sticking around. Meet some people. Everybody here went through the same thing. Everybody wondered if there was any hope. Everybody thought I've withdrawn from everybody in my life. Right, everything you're feeling that makes you feel like you're alone and isolated, and that only cat that has ever felt the way you felt. There's nobody you're looking at in the comment section that hasn't felt the way you felt. I don't know. I get wicked <laughs> solace in that. I feel really good knowing that. Right? That I'm not a I'm not a freak. I'm not a weirdo. I got a disease, and there's a crap load of other people that have it. And once you kind of understand that, it's a lot easier not to beat yourself up so bad. Who in their right mind robs more than one bank? Hey. Well, who in their right, right mind robs a bank? But who in their right mind robs banks, right? That's not normal, is it? Well, I wasn't in my right mind. So I'm not going to beat my crap out of myself like uh, like I should. Comment. Merry Christmas, all. Uh, thank you, RET stockbroker. I like it. Retired stockbroker, even better, right? Ha <laughs> ha I can see that. C A T. Yeah. I like it. That's funny. The next phase. The next phase is total support. The next phase is look, we've built a community. We really have a community here. We have a community of people that understand the concept. 
We're all pulling in the same direction. We believe that the opposite of addiction and the opposite of everything else is connection. That when we withdraw from society and from and from the people that we care about, and if we don't have people in our lives that we care about, well, we need to find some because we are designed to be connected to one another. And these devices have done nothing but separate us from one another from Jump Street. And it's getting worse and it's getting worse and it's getting worse. And if it was just the computer, that would suck. But the computers go with us, right? Now you can get them in glasses for them and they're talking about what? No lie. They're talking about ways to implant these babies into us. Make us really streamline, right? Makes a ton of sense. Thank you for all the time and commitment you invest in getting out information that makes us more informed on critical aspects of society from your unique perspective. That's a really cool thing to say, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And thank you for the support. You know what? I get a lot of help from uh, people here on Staying Sober. This really is a huge part of my uh, of my routine. You know, this is a huge part of what I do to continue um, my uh, my sober journey. Is there an expectation that prisoners will be gunning for uh, Danny? That is an excellent expectation because of what Danny's crimes are. Throw on the fact that he's famous, right? But what his crimes are it is considered a wildly dishonorable crime, right? It's a wildly dishonorable crime. All of us know that what he did isn't about sex, right? It's about control and dominance and sickness and disgust and whatever. It's not about sex. But convicts haven't got that memo, right? So it's one of those things where the, the general consensus, I promise you I did a lot of time, with the inmates is going to be, this dude had all of the money in the world and he was a famous actor, right? He owned a, owned a nightclub or whatever. Like this dude was had everything in life, right? But he couldn't get laid. He had to, he had to use a gun to do it. I know that's not what, how it happens. I know what it's about, right? But that's the convict mentality. They're going to be like, this cat couldn't do that. So he, yeah, no, he's done. Yeah, they're gunning for him. I promise you. They're gunning for him. They would be gunning for him just because of what the crime is, regardless. However, um, it's considerably uh, worse than that. Just because and love your channel, wanted to wish you and everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Brenda Martin. I appreciate that so much. You know, I went to uh, I went to school with a girl named Brenda Martin. We were actually really, really good friends growing up. But uh, I remember her well. Uh, Ann Hummingbird asking for prayers for my daughter's travel. Well, let's get it. Let's get it. Right, 651 people in the uh, live chat here at the Lifeboat. You know what, people? I, uh, I'm I'm so impressed that uh, that where we are, where we are. I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world that people uh, watch this. You know what I mean? I really believe that. That's just something. Thank you, Lady Crispin. Uh, gifted five memberships. Thank you, Lady Fiona. I really appreciate that. Uh, I mean that. But uh, yeah, I, I remember a day where... Um, I remember a day when six in the, in the chat was pretty much what we did, right? And uh, between six to 15 people, we did for probably eight months. And we did... Two or three of them a day, <laughs> every day. But you know something? Uh, of that group, almost everybody is still here. And this right here, this one is for one of those early crew members, Leisure, Leisure Beast, uh, who's in the hospital currently and could uh, could use our thoughts and prayers. Leisure is one of us people. Good, good dude, but um, needs thoughts and prayers uh, right now in a really big way. So I have. Uh, I have gone and um, enrolled at the uh, county uh, jail in where old, hello, Jules Rainbow Bunny. Uh, I like your name. The county jail where Danny Masterson is now calling his uh, temporary, um, you know, hotel while he awaits his permanent home. Uh, when he gets the kick on the door in the middle of the night that says, roll up your stuff. I'm going to get a text that tells me that uh, Danny Masterson is on his way to uh, to prison, at which point I will probably do the second to the last video I will do on him, right? Because someone eventually is going to end up doing something bad to him. And you guys are going to say, hey, Tommy, you look into that, come on here and tell us about it. And then I will. And, and I'm not, I'm, yeah, they come in the middle of the night, Julia. So here's how it works. And this is everything in prison. 
normally the bus is going to leave and they never leave at the same time twice, right? They don't leave on the same day every week. They change up everything so that you cannot get Vin Diesel to show up and spring you out of the uh, California transport. You've seen Vin do it twice, or maybe he got, anyway, you shake it, right? If you watch the Fast and the Furious, you know that it's not hard to break out a uh, uh, an inmate. You just need really fast cars and bah. Anyway, you never leave at the same time. You never leave on the same day. They v really vary it up. But let's say just for giggles that the bus is leaving at nine o'clock in the morning. Well, to get an inmate to leave at nine o'clock in the morning, you got to wake them up at about 3 a.m. I'm not joking. They wake up everybody at 3 a.m. and they kick the door and they say, roll up your stuff, be packed up because you're leaving in five minutes. But then they really don't come back until about four. So you have your, your bedroll rolled up, all your stuff packed into one big laundry bag, just a mesh bag, and you're laying down the rolled up mat waiting for the cop to come back. And then he comes back, opens the door. You walk down, throw your mattress down, all your linen, right? They say throw out everything but your paperwork. Then they're going to have him take off his uh, clothing. Spanks Calhoun, pull up Charlie Sheen gets attacked at his uh, house. Can you pull up that uh, news report? Because this is breaking uh, news, but Sheen may have been attacked at his house. That would really be interesting to uh, to hear. I hope that's not the case. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, people. How you been, Johnny? Awesome. Good to see everybody. Yeah. So if we can check that, uh, Calhouni. And you know what? Uh, I'm a fan of uh, of Charlie Sheen. I really am. I hope that he is okay. Free toxic foods for dogs. That's scary right there. I'm not going to lie to you. However, it's not exactly... Charlie Sheen's neighbor. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. <clears throat> well, of course you did. But that doesn't make me smart, Fiona. I think the message you should have sent it to should have been Calhoun. He's considerably smarter than I am. Yeah, it does look like this is indeed a fact. Charlie Sheen was attacked by a woman with a deadly weapon. Now, this is no good. Oh, look at her with her foot hanging all the way out of the basket. You're such a cute cat. Having a good day. You know something? Would you do me a favor? No, you know something? I am terribly sorry. Yeah, it is absolutely a fact, Lady Crispin. He was apparently stabbed on the 20th, and he uh, it was fairly serious, but I guess he's going to be all right, which is good because I was worried about it. You know what? I can understand why, uh, you know, he probably should stop smoking. That's really bad for you if you're, uh, especially if you're fighting um, something that is debilitating to your uh, immune system. And as most of us know, uh, Charlie is uh, HIV positive, but a, a real spokesperson for it, which I think is probably the courageous thing to do if you find out that you've got it. Um, you wouldn't name your son's Oedipus. I, I should hope not. I should hope not. You're right. He's done serious damage and it has shown in his life he does not attract, um, he does not attract great people. I'm sorry, there really is something like that. <laughs> my cat rocks and I get many points for being a cat person. I want to tell you something. I am a cat person. That is not for anybody's benefit, but me, I have been, my, uh, my son Spanx Calhoun can absolutely back this up. Uh, yeah, Charlie Sheen attacked. And you make a really good point. You know, the, the damage that he did. Uh, if you were out just being an epic man whore for the, for the vast majority of your life and you're sleeping with virtually everybody under the sun, uh, bragging about it, uh, filming, right? Tiger blood, right? Winning, winning. Yeah. You go off the rails like that, uh, the way that um, that poor Charlie Sheen did, you're going to leave a lot of people behind that are really, really angry. Uh, the number of people that he had to contact and say, you probably need to go get tested alone. Um, I would imagine that there's a lot of people that are really angry. And then there's a lot of rumors that whether they're true or not, there's a lot of rumors that go around. Yes, um, 
Catherine Martin McMartin says he's not a great person. He's a you know what, like the rest of uh, Hollyweird. There's a lot of, uh, and I can't, here's the thing. If I can find that and really uh, get something that I feel like is, uh, I can sink my teeth into to prove that, I would happily tell the entire world. I do tell people every time I feel like I can document that, I'll be happy to smut that person up to the end of time, right? Like I'm doing here today with Danny. I promise if I get that, you'll get it. There has definitely been accusations. However, some of them uh, really don't have a whole lot of uh, um, things to back it up or people who said something and then recanted something. I've wanted to do this show on him about four different times. But in, in almost every case where I track something down, it's been people that have thrown, uh, that have said things about him or people that have been in the middle of a really heated um, situation legally which very often leads to some horrendous, horrendous stuff that people say. If I, if I'm telling you people, if I can not feel like I'm just passing on stuff and I'm not defending the guy, the guy was an epic dirt bag, right? An epic dirt bag. I'm just not sure if some of the things that, uh, that he's been accused of, I wouldn't feel comfortable reporting them with the amount of stuff that I can find out there. You follow me? Um, well, the ex doesn't seem biased at all kind of thing. You know, that you, your ex-wife can't testify against you in court. You're right. Your ex-husband can't testify. You know, that you, you lose credibility by them being your ex, but that doesn't necessarily mean the guy's not guilty. I'm not defending the guy. Don't send me hate mails. For the love of God, he's Charlie Sheen. He's one of the biggest dirtbags that ever lived. He is a walking meme. He's funny as heck. I enjoy the hell out of Charlie Sheen, but I don't think he's a good a good human being. He's a walking meme, you know, that... That whole stunt that he went through when he was filming and screaming tiger blood and all of that, you want just a, a great example to actually use and show people that you care about uh, you know, what cocaine can do to you, what it looks like when you spend four days not sleeping. Good Lord, that entire – I can't believe that there was nobody in his sphere of influence that wasn't going over to his house and going, this is what you're doing, right? You're, you're a dad. You're coming on here with the, what did he call them? Princesses, angels. What? <laughs> he had a name for them, kind of like Feldman does. Feldman calls them angels. What did Charlie call them? I don't know. They were porn stars, but. Tiger Milk <laughs> was his best sitcom. Triple Double on. <laughs> I like it. Uh, do I have a top uh, favorite movie or top three? Uh, I really like the movie Casablanca. That's my favorite film. Uh, my favorite film of all time is Casablanca. Uh, I really like Alice in Wonderland. The um, not the new stuff. I like the the nineteen fifties animated one, nineteen fifty one animated um, from Disney. I think that's an amazing film. And then any of the any of the eighties uh, comedy stuff. I'm like uh, P I'm like Peter Griffin. You know, Caddyshack. Yeah, absolutely. Caddyshack. I have I have the movie, uh, I have the movie poster from Caddyshack signed by everybody. I'm just waiting for a frame. I bought it. It's going up on the wall, actually. I've got I bought that at a uh, auction. It's awesome. Lacey Underall signed it. Can you top that? Um, the movie Funny Farm. Yeah, Funny Farm. That's in my uh it's in my top five too, yeah, to be sure. Uh yeah, Alice, the 80s movies, right? All the 80s movies. I, I just, I look back on them and I understand that a great deal of that, uh, <laughs> I, I know that a great deal of it is nostalgia and it's, you know, you're a kid. I mean, when you're a kid, you're in love for the first time and you're, you're drinking a beer for the first time and, you know, you're going out to dinner for the first time without, you know, taking someone on a date, all that stuff. Almost an angel. Almost an angel. Almost an angel. I don't know if I know what that is, but I'll look into it. You just watched Funny Farm a few days ago? Did you love it? Huh? Did you love it? Did you say, boy, Tommy was fantastic in that movie? I bet you didn't. Apparently, the woman who stabbed Charlie Sheen was his neighbor. He didn't have to go to the hospital. So minor, but creepy. Claims to be six years sober. Hopefully true. Uh, I tend to think he might be sober. I think Charlie's scared got all the money in the world and he thinks he's going to die. 
Um, you know, I think he's probably pretty nervous. I think he's probably trying to stay sober. But it's almost funny, right? What was the name of the uh, girl from Two and a Half Men? I didn't watch that show much, to be honest. But was her name Rose? Was Rose the next door neighbor? You're darn right. I have a autographed picture of Jeannie. I do. I have. Uh, I actually have several autographed pictures of Jeannie. So there. Alrighty, people. You know what that is? That is the top of the hour. You saw the beginning of Funny Farm and you saw me in it. You should have kept going. I'm on it more than once. Keep going. I'm on again, too. The uh, the, the scene at the end is even better. Thank you, Maggot. I appreciate that. Rose, Rose was a funny character. Oh, Paul Hogan from Croc Dundee. He was a bank robber? Bob is. Paul Hogan was a bank robber? Got the front door. Yes, I was pretty young in that. I was. Uh, that's when I had a lot of hair. <laughs> that's when I had a lot of hair. That was in that was in the 80s. I had quite a bit of hair back then. Uh, right around the same time, I think that picture was taken right there. See that? Look at all that hair. Are you kidding me? I used to have hair. Yeah, I love Paul Hogan. I love Paul Hogan more now. He seems far more uh, far more amazing and human. I didn't know he was a bank robber. And then he came back from that to be a success. I love that. I love that story. I did not know, man. How cool is that? Are you loving that? I'm loving that. Uh, Steve Martin. Love Steve Martin. Cruel Shoes. Steve Martin. A, uh, a gift. From uh, Miss Dragon, uh, one of my uh, one of my mods and friends on the Lifeboat, who also does fantastic content. Before I leave, everybody, can the mods put up a link to Needing a Meeting and a link to uh, um, all of our friends? By the way, we are going to be putting up a uh, um, a little place on um, on our channel that says uh, the Friends of the Lifeboat, and it's going to be uh, other places that we. Oh, play the bank robber. See, you had me going. I would have done a show in about 10 minutes and called the guy a bank robber. I need to see him play one. I was far, I was far more uh, excited. Cats are just more the underdogs. Cats are just like, I don't know. I'm so impressed by a cat's ability to train a human being. You know, like, honestly, the things that I do are all sort of wrap around, um, Thank you very much, Henny. That is the needing a meeting right there, people. If you you can't click onto it where it is, but you can click onto it where Henny is. And uh, that's needing the meeting. We also have Miss Dragon, and there are more coming. I know of a bunch of projects in the works. Thank you so much for coming here and listening to me, people. I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the whole world. I really am. Mel Brooks is awesome. I am Captain Tommy Scoville. And you know what this is right here, people? That is a cat in a basket. Hold on. Let's see something. Would you like to clean your tail? I'll hold it. Sometimes if I hold her tail, she likes me to hold it so she can chew on the end of it, but she's apparently not in the mood. You want it? He's a good girl. All right, people. We'll see you on the next one. I'm Captain Tommy. Bye-bye.